Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We do thank the Lord for blessing us, amen, with uh, the opportunity able to come together to break the bread of life. Uh, we do thank the Lord for paving the way for us to be able to come and to fellowship before him. Excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> My throat. But, um, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, we do thank the Lord for opening up a door <clears throat> for us to uh, uh, sit at his table, <coughs> excuse me, to sit at his table and to fellowship with him, uh, to have the opportunity <clears throat> to be able to uh, receive from him uh, that manna from upon high. Uh, and truly, we do thank him for the opportunity because we do know there is no better table to sit at uh, than the Lord's table. Uh, this evening, praise the Lord, we have with us, amen, a, uh, a wonderful man of God, <clears throat> a good friend of mine, uh, praise the Lord, uh, and um, an anointed man of God, amen, he's the pastor, amen, of the Good Samaritan Church <clears throat> in North Carolina, uh, part of the uh, JC family, and um, before we uh, bring forth uh, uh, Pastor Elder Donovan, uh, we will have a word of prayer. I invite everybody to pray with me in Jesus' name. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we love and thank you. We ask, Lord, that you would have mercy upon us all. We're here for no other reason, Lord God, but to honor you and to revere you and to learn of you. We're asking, Lord, that you would have mercy upon every last person here and as souls, Lord God, every participant on this call. And Lord God, you would bless us and our household with those things needful unto us and desires of our hearts. We're asking, Lord God, that you would look upon your manservant, that you would anoint him and steer him in the direction that you see fit, Lord God, as he, uh, Lord God, will be sensitive to the move of your spirit, that he may take of the spiritual loaves of bread as well as fish to administer unto your people, that we may walk from here so much stronger than we were before we got here. We thank you, Lord God, immensely for all that you've done and do. Continue to keep us from the enemy and ultimately keep us from your time. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray, amen and amen. 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 Again to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive me for my throat. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, came on me right away. Uh, but uh, uh, praise the Lord anyhow. Amen. In Jesus' name. Give honor to the Lord who is the head of my life. Praise the Lord, our lives. And to the uh, amen. Wonderful pastor of the house, president of the Central Jersey Bible Institute, the person of uh, Elder John Betts. And to his uh, wife, praise the Lord, First Lady Gloria Betts, uh, to the mother of the house, Mother Ida Harrell, and on the behalf of the Central Jersey Bible Institute Board, amen, we say praise the Lord unto you all, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And without further ado, amen, I will turn off my squeaky voice so that you can hear a more profound voice, praise the Lord, in the person of our instructor for the evening, uh, in the person of my friend, Elder Maurice Donovan, in Jesus' name. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I truly thank him and I honor him for his goodness. I thank him for just allowing me to come together once again uh, to share the word of God with you. And as I say, it is always a privilege, always a privilege to share the word of God. Um, I want to also uh, give honor to um, Apostle Raymond Keith and his wife in their absence. Uh, he's the regional apostle, and also uh, Elder Bex and his lovely wife, uh, Elder Bonet and his uh, lovely wife, Chantel, whom I've known for um, quite a bit, a bit. Also want to thank, um, say, I want to I give um, honor also to the elders and the missionaries, uh, the, the ministers, the deacons, and the uh, mothers, uh, the saints of God um, of the Greater Refuge Church of Christ. And last but not least, I want to give honor to my wife, uh, Lady Florence Donovan, um, and also um, my family who has tuned in, and also the uh, visitors who, who may have logged in for the first time. Um, I also want to um, give you, let's say, um, I want to honor you tonight as well. But uh, I'm going to be, uh, as it was mentioned, this is the second uh, part of a four series um, uh, and um, equipped for warfare is the uh, topic that I have chosen. But I'm going to be speaking with you on uh, regarding the shield 
and the helmet tonight. Uh, last time I spoke with you, um, we talked about the um, the belt of righteous, the belt um, of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and also the feet being shod. But I want to draw your attention, uh, praise the Lord, to Ephesians, the uh, sixth chapter, because that's where I'm going to be coming out of uh, this evening. And uh, <clears throat> and the uh, as I mentioned, the focus thought is to put on the whole arm of God. Uh, which comes um, from verse 11 of chapter 6. And um, the uh, focus verse, the focus verse will be Ephesians, the, uh, the sixth chapter, verses 16 and 17. And um, the lesson text will be Ephesians, the sixth chapter, 11 to 12, and also uh, 16 and 17. Um, <clears throat> I'm hearing back a little bit. Uh, for some okay, all right, so what I want to um, do is I want to look at verse uh, verse 16, and it says, um, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, taking the shield of faith. And it also um, says in verse 17, uh, take the helmet of salvation. And it also goes on to mentioning the sword of the spirit. But I'm going to be talking about, I mentioned the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. And um, it's very important to, um, and I, I, as I mentioned before, we cannot um, go into a battle with partial armor, but we have to be fully equipped especially in these last and evil days, we have to be fully equipped and make sure that we have the entire um, garment or the entire um, armor as laid out in Ephesians, this, the uh, sixth chapter. And it's very important. Um, and, um, and as I begin to speak about the shield, the shield and also the helmet, uh, both of these have significance. And, I, and I'm quite sure that when Paul uh, mentioned this uh, uh, laid out the the armory that he, that's in chapter six. I'm certain that he looked at, uh, or may have been inspired by what he saw, and that is a Roman centurion, um, a Roman soldier. And 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 when Paul mentions these 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 um elements, um these these this armory, um, I'm pretty sure that he was inspired. But um he mentions um the the from from the you know, the, the, um, let me see. He mentions, now I want to look at verse 11. He says, put on a whole armor, but then he also explains why. He says, so that we can be, so that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. But as we go down to verse um, 16, he says, above all, taking the shield of faith. And it's interesting that he uses the, the phrase above all, above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, when you think about a shield of faith, and when I think about the shield of faith, I think about, uh, the the Romans during that era, the Romans and also the the Greeks, how they used shields um, and during during their um their, their conflict, and that they used primarily used the um the, the sort of like guard their their front, uh, the, the heart. It was used to guard their hearts um, and to protect their, their their front part, and um. And it's very important because now when I read this, this has um, uh, spiritual significance in, in that uh, we need to constantly guard our front, particularly our heart, and, and protect it against uh, the infiltration of, of the enemy, Satan, who, who seeks to um, not only um, plant thoughts in our hearts, but also plant thoughts in our minds. And this is why uh, the shield um, and it mentions it being a shield of faith. It is used to protect our heart, to protect our front. And um, going back to the Romans and the, the Greeks, uh, combat, when they were in combat, they would use the shield to block uh, the sword. If the enemy had a sword trying to um, the, 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 the pierce them through, the shield would block. Sometimes the shield was used to, um, to block arrows uh, you know that that the enemy would shoot at them so that's the same um sort of concept 
um, that we can use when it comes to the spiritual battle that we are fighting because the Bible says we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but we're wrestling against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness that are places. Uh, fighting against the um against an enemy. Repeat that. Sorry about that. Um, we're fighting against an enemy that we can't see. Um, so having the shield um is very important. And then think about the consequences of not having the shield. Imagine if we went to battle, uh, and I'm talking about battling without shields. That means that it leaves us vulnerable to um, a, a sword or vulnerable to um, uh, an arrow that may be shot at us. So it's very important. Um, and, and Satan, you, you know, uh, when, you, when you think about this enemy that we are fighting against, he's, he could be very crafty because what happens is this, he utilizes the heart of men in order to cause us to even rebel against God or to you know, go outside of the will of God. And he would use the heart and he would manipulate, I'm talking about the enemy, would manipulate uh, the, the heart so that we can wind up um, doing what's um, considered displeasing in God's eyes. Think about Eve, uh, when, when, when the Bible says that, when he came to her when she was in the garden, the first thing he did was this, uh, he began to work on her heart. Um, he planted thoughts in her mind, but he began to work on her heart. See. The, the mind, our minds, cannot uh, do anything unless it comes from the heart. Our minds follow what's in, in other words, our minds follow the dictates of our hearts. If, if, you know how the saying goes, if it's in my heart to do it, I'm going to do it. You know, wherever that may be, if it's in my heart to do. So when the enemy came to Eve, he began to immediately he planted the thought in her mind, but he immediately began to work on her heart. But, but when he first said to her, have not God said? That, what that basically did was did something to Eve. Yes, he heard what he said, but it began to, it began to obviously change um, what she felt or what she was told about God. And then she began to look at it in a in, in different light. And that's how the enemy does. He, he, he takes the word, he twists it. And even in our hearts, he may take the word and he may twist it in order to get us um, out of the will of God. And, and it's very important that we, we constantly hold up our shields and, and throw it off the attacks of the enemy because the enemy is ruthless. We hear this from time to time that we're fighting against a, a very um, um, formidable, formidable foe. And, and, and sometimes we underestimate the enemy's power. And, and and even and thank God we, we know that the Lord has all power in his hands, but sometimes we underestimate the enemy's power. And we sometimes um would would, or, would think or, or we may feel like, okay, um, I can handle this on my own, or or I can fight against him um by myself. When the Bible says that we can do nothing without Jesus, we can do nothing without Christ. It is He that helps us and enables us to fight off the enemy. But the heart. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. See, when you look at the state of man and, and the conditions that man is in, and you look at his heart, uh, it, it makes you really, really um, ponder, like, is there a remedy or is there something? Is there something that can really, um, and I'm talking from an, um, like how an unfer a unsafe person would think, is there something that can really help me um, to, to, to to change my ways because all of a sudden um, I and we make New Year New Year's resolutions every year. We say I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to change this, I'm going to change that. Only to find out that um, that what we had initially planned uh, to do and the things that we have planned to change has fallen um, uh, and 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 pretty much um, came to naught, uh, meaning that um, we. We plan to, to like physically stop smoking. We, we plan to stop drinking. We plan to do all these things. And I'm talking about that, that without without the power of the Holy Ghost. We try. We plan to stop, um, you know, gambling. But all of a sudden, when we get to even before we get to the mid year, we find ourselves um, back into um, you know, you know the, the things that we said that we weren't going to do. Um, and not only that, but 
we realize how powerless we, we are um, as human beings. But the heart is deceitful of all things, as Jeremiah once said. But Jesus also pointed out that the heart, he mentions that all things come from the heart. Um, um, our thoughts come from the heart. You know, um, you know the, the adultery, all these things emanate from the heart. Um, fornication, um, all these things. Um, all things, and as Jesus pointed out in Matthew 15, 15 chapter, all things um, come from the heart. And this is why it's important for us uh, to keep our hearts guarded with the shield, you know, so that um, the enemy cannot um, plant things in our heart, plant thoughts in our heart. Because we look at it like this. You say, okay, it's the mind where, where our battle um, occurs. But we sometimes we tend to forget that it all starts with the heart of man. Because Satan uses the heart to his advantage, you know, because he knows that the heart is wicked. He knows that the heart is is is, is desperately wicked, as the Bible said. But you know, he knows that the heart can be unstable. Um, we know he knows that the heart can have evil thoughts. So what he does is he uses that, um, as I mentioned, to his advantage. And this is why David cried out. <clears throat> he says, "Pray to me a clean heart." Now we we know the story with David, um, uh, with him and Bathsheba, where he. You know, when he saw her um, bathing from his, he was on his rooftop and he saw her bathing. First thing he did was wanted her. Knew that wasn't his wife, you know, but he wanted her anyhow. And he felt that because he was the king, uh, that he was above the law, that he could do what he wanted to do. But we, of course, we found out later that that was not the case, um, that God ultimately had control and was reigning over the, the, um, Israel in spite of what David um, did or tried to do. But David, um, his cry to the Lord was, creating me a clean heart. And I believe that Psalm 51 was uh, um, a penitent prayer that David um, did when he fell um, to, um, because of his own lust. And I remember this, because of his own lust. What does the Bible say? Um, that a man is tempted when he's drawn away with his own lust and enticed. And, and lust, when it is conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. And this is why it's so important and, and, and paramount uh, to us to always ask God to clean our hearts. And, and sometimes, even as uh, sometimes you look at us as, as preachers, we, you know, it's like we haven't made at times. No, we are constantly in a battle just as much as you are in a battle. And we need prayer just as much as you need prayer. And we, we need to confess and, uh, and continue to confess our sins to the Lord just as much as anybody else. And even more so because the enemy is constantly um, attacking, you know, and, and if you can attack um, God's mouthpiece, you know, which which happens to be the preachers, um, you know, he can pretty much try to shut uh, down and, and shut up those who are proclaiming God's word. And, and this is why we say, Lord, please, create me a clean heart, constantly asking the Lord. I know that I don't even trust myself as a person, you know. Sometimes when we feel, um, we, we feel like we know ourselves at times, and we don't know ourselves, you know. Um, and, and you know the saying goes: there, there are like there are uh, four parts to ourselves. Uh, and what, and what I mean by that is this: you have the um, excuse me, you have the um, the known self, you have the unknown self, and then you have the hidden self, and they have the um the the revealed self. And what I mean by the, the known self, meaning this: there are things that we know about ourselves that nobody else knows. And sometimes what we do is this, um, the known self, sometimes we project what we want others to see um, in us, the known self. You know how the saying goes, people may say, well, I know myself. No one knows me better than I know myself. Um, well, that's partly true, but God knows us better than we know ourselves. But um, the known self is when you, um, things that you know about yourself uh, and things and how, what you would like to project, project in, in the eyes of others. You have the known, then you have the unknown self, where there are things about you, I think things about me that we thought we knew. We've come to find out that we didn't know as much as we thought that we knew about ourselves. And, and you ever heard um, the saying um, where uh, someone does something and then um, they say, well, I never thought I would do this. I never thought um, I would say that. Or, or I never thought that I would behave this way. I would never... That's the unknown self. There are things about us that we don't know, things that are in us that we don't know, that 
um, given the uh, given the I guess and I, I don't want to say the opportunity time, but given uh, given the um the, the the situation will present itself, and sometimes for the good, the bad, or the ugly. So we have to be careful when we talk about um, our unknown self. Then you got the the hidden self, uh, where that yes, things that we know about ourselves, but things that we try to hide, you know, uh, from others that where no one knows but God. You know, things that we do behind um, closed doors, or things that we do when we're not in church that only God sees and knows. And, and when we think that he, you know, he's not watching, of course, his eyes is everywhere, beholding the evil and the good. And this is the hidden self, things that we, we that we hide um, from, you know, from from people. Some things that you may even hide from your, your family. Some things you may even hide from your spouse, your children. That's the hidden self um, um, that we that we have in and of ourselves. Then you have the uh, the revealed self, things that also that um that you want people. You know that you reveal it's almost like um you you it's like a display that that you you know uh, and we, sometimes we may call it the facade um, depending on what people depending on what we're doing at the time but there's a revealed self that we want that we show and display to the world that um we want others to see in us you know and you know the, the, how the saying goes sometimes when you you come across people that that appear nice on your job the next thing you know sometimes um something can happen. They did this change on you at, at the drop of a dime. You'd be like, wow, I didn't know she was that way, or I didn't know he was that way. Um, that's the hidden self. And, and that's something that they probably didn't, didn't show you or, or, or try to hide from you. <laughs> but eventually, when, when the hidden self reveals itself, um, um, sometimes it can, it can be um, not a good situation there. But David said, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit in me, a right spirit, a spirit that's going to obey your will, a, a spirit that's going to do um, what you have called me to do, a spirit that's going to live a life that's pleasing and acceptable to you. Lord, because I know that the enemy, you know, he's constantly at my heart, you know, trying to, to, to cause me to go, to go out of your will, uh, trying to cause me to, to, to do things that I don't want to do. And then I'm going to get to um, Apostle Paul. Uh, and how he battled with himself, but we we say, Lord, Lord, help me to be what you would have me to be, and, and that's one of our that should be one of our daily prayers because when we are in God's will, and we are um, um, fighting, literally fighting to, to to keep His will, there's going to be a battle. But when you keep His will, and I keep His will, and we're walking in, in His Word, and we have the shield of faith that is guarding our hearts, then we can truly say that, Lord, thank you, because now you feel free, I feel free to worship God in the spirit, to worship God um, um, in, in freedom, you know, because this, doesn't the Bible say that where the, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? And, and one thing that I, that I want to point out, what David said, is, uh, not well, yes, David said in Psalms um, uh, 9, uh, he says in verse 9, 1 and 2, he says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous, marvelous works. And then he goes on to say in verse two, I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. So, but he said in verse one, with my whole heart, with my whole heart. And this is what the Lord wants. He wants our hearts. Because once our hearts, um, praise God, are right, then God can not only minister to us, but we can minister to him, hallelujah, in, in a way that's pleasing to him. You know, and we won't have the Lord say this that, um, to us, as he said to Israel. He said, we draw nigh to him with our mouths, and we honor him with our lips, but our hearts are far from him. And, and that's something we, I don't want the Lord to say um, because, I, you know, he looks at the heart of man. And this is why I cannot emphasize this anymore. And I'm saying we have to <clears throat> make sure that we constantly have that shield up, you know, because if you, when, once we don't have that shield or once we drop the shield and lower it, that leaves us vulnerable to the enemy attack. And see, Satan is constantly, constantly looking for ways to shoot 
as the Bible says, his fiery dart, looking for ways. And, and no matter where, he, you know, no matter how he shoots it, you know, what, whatever target he hits, as long as he can bypass that, that shield and, and hit us on, on his side, wherever he finds an opening, he will try. So this is why we have to constantly have that shield in front of us so that when we, that when we see the fiery darts of the wicked coming, we can, and then notice the Bible says, shield of faith. You're going to hold up that shield of faith, and, and, and we can tell the enemy that, that you're a liar. Whatever you're trying to shoot at me is not going to work. With my, my mind, and I'm going to get to that, and I'm going to talk about the helmet of salvation, my mind and my heart is focused and centered on God. My mind and my heart is following, are following the Lord. My mind and my heart are sold out to Jesus. My mind and my heart. So now I want to talk about um, this is, um, and I want to look at this because this is not, not something that um, goes goes back to why I'm, uh, I mentioned about keeping the shield up. Solomon said in Proverbs the fourth chapter verse twenty two. He says this. He says, "Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it flows." The issues of life. Keep thy heart. Hallelujah. He says, keep thy heart with all diligence. Not keep your mind, but keep your heart with all diligence. Why? Because, and now notice this, when you talk about diligence, you're talking about working as something. When someone works, when someone does something with diligence, you're working hard at keeping or maintaining whatever you have. If you, um, if you're training, um, and I'll go back to, um, let me just share, when I, when I used to um, box, um, I used to always make sure that I was up five o'clock in the morning jogging in Central Park, New York. I used to always make sure that I was in the gym, uh, training, hitting a bag. I used to always make sure that I was jumping rope. Um, when my trainer um, told me to, to do push-ups, I always make sure I did my sets of push-ups. I always make sure that I was um, in the ring to spar when, when my trainer told me to get in the ring. And when I did these things, I did them with all diligence, meaning that I was working hard at, because I had aspirations on, on becoming, and I look back and, and um, I, I had aspirations on, on becoming a champ one day, a worldwide champ. But I say that, say this, when you are diligent, you work hard at something. And it doesn't have to just be sports, it can be anything in life. When you work with all diligence, so here's Solomon saying this, keep thy heart with all diligence. Meaning work hard at protecting your heart. Keep your heart with all Work hard at protecting it because out of it, or out of it are the issues of life. Our thoughts, Jesus has mentioned to us what comes out of the heart. Everything comes out of the heart. It could be the good, and it could be the bad, it could be the ugly, but everything comes out of the heart. The, word, the words that we speak come out of the heart. You know, you know how the saying goes that, that, that sometimes the word that, that received from, from the mouth comes forth from the heart. You know, Jesus said, mentioned how that defiled a man. When we uh, um, speak from the heart, whether it's good or, or bad, but when we speak from the heart, sometimes, and I should say sometimes, but many times, um, even when we apologize, sometimes people are not um, quick to forgive because you know, how the saying goes, we cannot take back what we said. And this is why um, when you guard the heart with diligence, when I guard my heart with diligence, therefore, um, I will be very careful um, of the words that I utter, uh, because Je as Jesus said, in many things we offend all. He that offend not in word, the same as a perfect man. So sometimes when we, uh, when we, when we say things to, to people, we can hurt them, you know, and hurt their feelings. We can cause um, people to, to, um, to resent us. Uh, we can even call, cause people to hate us based on what we said. And many times, even as we try to apologize and say, um, please forgive me. Yes, they may forgive you. But sometimes you know how the saying goes, yeah, I forgive you, but I won't forget what you said. So, but, but if we guard our hearts with diligence, you know, it protects us uh, from the things that we may say or do to hurt others. So this is why Psalm said, keep thy heart with all diligence or out of it, are the issues of life. 
and as the saying goes, why it's important to guard our hearts? And I have now, I have three points. Why? Because as I mentioned before, Satan knows how to use our hearts because it's wicked. Who's the advantage? Um, and not, not only that, but um, the heart can be influenced and manipulated by Satan. We showed how he did that in the Garden of Eden. And then also, the heart can be deceived easily. The heart can be deceived easily. Has ever, has it ever happened? I know it happened to me. Has it ever happened to you where um, sometimes you think the Lord is leading you to do something only to find out that what you thought the Lord led you to do, that he didn't do it, he didn't need you to do it. But, and then what happens is that what you try to do falls and it falls apart and, and never comes to fruition because, well, that's because sometimes we think in our hearts that the Lord is allowing or telling us something or directing us somewhere when that may not be the case. And, and this is what's important because the Bible says this, the heart is, what, what, is, what the Bible says? Um, it mentions that there's a way that seems right into a man. That's one of the switches I love. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There's a way that may seem right. Sometimes we, 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 you know, we think it's the right thing to do. Oh, if I could just help the Lord out. Oh, I, I, I know the Lord is telling me to do this because, it, you know, we're going by emotion. We're going by pure emotion, but sometimes, many times, um, um, like sometimes when we when we ha uh, have in our hearts that the Lord may have directed us to do something, uh, it may not be the case. And this is why it's very important to pray as well as um, fast, as well as stay in his word. Because there's a way that seems right into a man. Think about the, um, um, the, the Ark of the Covenant. Well, when, she, when, when the Ark of the Covenant was taken by the Philistines and it was placed in the house of Dagon um, and and then all of a sudden, when David, um, when his men went back, because you know what happened was the ark was in these different places. Um, and all of a sudden, um, the, uh, the ark was 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 just, uh, pretty much um, destroy, or destroying the, the Philistines' gods. Meaning that, you remember the, the temple the te temple of Dagon where they had the, 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 the ark of the covenant there? And then the next thing in the morning, when, when they woke up, the Philistines saw that the ark, and not the ark, but they, they saw that their god, was falling to the ground and it was broken in pieces. But then again, they, they, they call for David and say, come David, come and get this thing out of here. Come and get this thing out of here. We don't want this. So David and his men came and, and they came to bring back the Ark of the Covenant. But remember when they came back, when they brought the Ark of the Covenant back, they set it on a cart. And, and they had, um, as it was coming back into, um, to, to back to the, um, the camp of Israel, the Bible says how the the, the cart shook the ark. And what happened was the, the men that, that, that um, I believe these were Levites, they all of a sudden put forth their hands to touch the, um, the, the ark and to stop it from falling. And what happened was God smit them, pretty much killed them. Why? Because they had touched the, 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 um, the ark of the covenant where God dwelt. He took, then he dwelt on, in, on the mercy seat, mercy seat. So what happened was this, that was a way that seemed right to them. They thought it was right to the, the, the prevent the, um, the Ark of the Covenant from falling. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end there are, are the ways of death. God never wanted them to touch that Ark. Never wanted. He told them how to, he, as a matter of fact, the Lord told them how to carry it. He had to, they had to, um, they had to um, bear, two had to bear it and carry it in the back, two had to carry it in the front. So there was four men that should have carried that Ark, not they put it on some, some, on some cart and allowed a car to drive it. But what happened was God smote them. So um, the heart is deceitful and it could be deceived easily. Now, getting back, now coming to the, um, um, to the, the helmet of salvation, and I mentioned how the, the shield is important. Now the helmet is very important. Why? Because the helmet is protects our minds. The helmet protects our mind. So when you have on a, on a helmet, um, praise the name of God, uh, it, it protects you from, it, it, like the shield, the, the iron cast helmet, can protect you from, from um, the, whatever the enemy may try to do, he may try to, I'm not talking about the Greeks and the Romans when they fought, they may they try to hit you over the head with, with the, the butt of their sword, that helmet will protect. Think about in our modern times in which we live, where people wear helmets on, um, to play football. 
the helmet will protect the, the um, it's supposed to protect the, the player's head from concussions. But if, imagine if they were playing football without helmets. So the helmet, as Paul mentioned here, the, the, the um, he says in verse, uh, verse 16, um, the shield of faith, and then he also, uh, verse 17, rather, and take the helmet of salvation. So the helmet is, is for protection, and it protects our minds. And not only does it protect our mind, but it, it protects um, us from the adversary who may try to um, put thoughts in our minds. And it may also protect us from our own desires that may be contrary to God's will. So it's very important to have on our, our helmet because sometimes, you know, and, and, it, and it's, it can be challenging for us for saints. You know, and, and, and I'm talking from experience. It can be really challenging uh, to keep our minds focused on the Lord because the enemy, think about the, the, the probably, I don't know how many, um, it could be hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of thoughts that we go through our minds each day. We don't, I just don't know the count, but I know that a lot of thoughts run through our minds. And only God knows if he, if he can um, calculate the thoughts and just show us on a, on, on a piece of paper how many thoughts. You'd be surprised. I would be surprised how many thoughts. So it's, it behooves us as um, praising of God, children of God, make sure that we have our helmets on so that we can protect our, 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 our head from the infiltration of what Satan may try to do, the infiltration of the enemy. Because he, he seeks to influence our minds. He seeks to, to cause us to, to, to go out of God's will. He seeks to, to cause us to, um, to, to, um, to, to backslide. That's his purpose. Satan is constantly fighting against us. And, and then not only that, but he's fighting against us at the same time, planning thoughts in our minds. Has that ever happened with, with uh, here, here, planning a thought in your mind? Say, so, look, you praying. Has God heard you? Has God answered your prayers? Has God, um, has God um, um, you know, opened the door for you? Has God? And he would just plant thoughts. And these thoughts, be, sometimes it seems like these thoughts are more, um, um, I mean, the, the thoughts, when the enemy seems like he had, has you and I at our weakest moments, sometimes the thoughts seem so strong and so loud in our minds to the point where um, we can become confused because why? Because all these thoughts are just coming in our heads. And, 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 the, and the helmet of salvation, which is supposed to, which is supposed to protect us from the, the not only the, 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 the thoughts that the enemy planned um, plan in our head, but it's supposed to protect us from our own thoughts is very, very important and very vital to walk, to this walk in Christ, because um, the, the 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 mind, the mind, and we can see how the, the how Apostle Paul himself had to contend with his own mind, you know, his own mind. Not only the enemy he has to contend with, but he had to contend with his own mind. You know how the saying goes: our biggest enemy is ourselves. Well, there's some, there's truth to that, you know. Um, the, our biggest enemies can be ourselves. And I, you know, can't say that everything is the enemy. When I say enemy, to Satan, but sometimes we cause, at times, can cause our own uh, downfall. We can cause our own weakness. We can cause our own um, suffering. We can bring. We can cause our own sickness. Uh, and it all stems from sometimes being not sometimes, but it all stems from, stems from being out of the will of God. But we have to um, sometimes sit back. And assess ourselves, and say to us, and say to ourselves, "Am I doing what's pleasing in God's eyes? Am I in His will? Is Jesus pleased with what I'm, with I, what I want to do? There's a way that seems right to a man, and, and many times I have to, I have to ask myself that, you know, Lord, is you know, I, because there are all of our goals is this in life is and that is to please the Lord, you know, to do what's pleasing and acceptable in his eyes. Because at the end, when it's all said and done, we all want to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. But looking at this, now I, I want to point this out. The mind, the mind, as I mentioned before, follows the dictates of the heart. And, that, and remember that the thoughts come from the heart, they, they register in the mind. And when it registered in our minds, we carry out what, we, what the heart told us to do. 
but but it's very important um, to make sure that we have the helmet on. Why? Because, um, and as the Bible says this, you know, uh, you know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, meaning they're not um, they're not earthly, you know, but they are mighty through God. So we're we're fighting a spiritual battle, mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination. See that the imagination? Where do imagination imaginations come from? On the thoughts of the heart, casting down imaginations and every high thought that that is contrary to God's will, every high thought that elevates itself above God's will, every high thought. So when we're casting down our imaginations, you know we have the helmet on, and the helmet assists or it enables us to do that. You know we can have the breastplate on, uh, we can have the um our feet shod, we can have the belt. We can have the um, the shield, but we don't have the helmet. We are still vulnerable, and as Paul said, we need the whole armor. Now, there's another scripture where Paul says in Romans the 12th chapter, he says, "I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service." I beseech you, therefore. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is our reason for service. And he goes on to say, and be not conformed to this world. In other words, don't allow the world to squeeze you into its mold, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There you go. There, there he goes. Being transformed, being changed by the renewing of our minds. Sometimes we have to renew our minds periodically. We have to, we have to, um, and this is very important. Renew our minds. We have to remind ourselves that we are saved. We have to remind ourselves that we can't do certain things in the world, of the world. We have to remind ourselves that we can't, we can't go certain places in this world. We got to remind ourselves that we can't, we can't, why? Because the world is constantly trying to squeeze us into its mold, but we are not supposed to let pop culture squeeze us into its mold. But we're supposed to be a shining light and an, an example to the world. Because this world, is, it has like a, a gravitational pull, constantly trying to pull us out of the body of Christ, trying to pull us away from the things of God. And, and what it does is this. The world, um, it, it just doesn't just present itself in, in before you. But what it does is it, it, it glamorizes itself. So that when you look at the world, it seems appealing. It seems it seems beautiful. It seems isn't that what the enemy did when he when he when he tempted Jesus? The Bible says that he showed Jesus all the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time, and said to Jesus, "All these things, not some." He said, "All these things will I give to you if you will bow down." And worship me. All these things. So Satan shows us the glamour of the world. He shows us the. I mean, if you're not careful, and if I'm not careful, we could be easily sucked into this world. And this is why we have to constantly fight. And I tell you, being saved is a fight in and of itself. Why? Because you're constantly fighting against your own thoughts. You're constantly fighting against the adversary. You're constantly fighting against the peer pressure. You constantly fighting. I'm constantly fighting against the the the, the, uh, the pressures of this world. Oh my God, the pressures of this world. And and one thing I, I I say to the Lord, Lord, I want to live holy. Lord, I want to live holy. Lord, I, Jesus, I want to see you. I tell and I, I tell you, I, like I'm talking to you. I, I talk to the Lord the same way. I, I I tell him what's on my heart. And I tell him at times when my heart needs to be cleansed. And, but I tell the Lord, Lord, I want to see you. I know you didn't save me and kept me for 36, 36 years for me to turn back into this world. Knowing that if I turn back into this world, that you have no pressure in those that turn back. But help me to live right, Lord. Help me to live holy. Help me to keep my helmet on. Help me to keep my breast, my, my, my shield. Help me to keep these things um, handy so that when the enemy starts to attack me, I will have someone, someone to, to fight them back, hallelujah, with the shield of faith. Fight them back 
with the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Salvation means deliverance. I've been saved. You have to, we have to tell the enemy that. I've been saved. I have been washed in the blood of Jesus. I have been transformed. I have the Holy Ghost. I can't do what the world is trying to get me to do. I can't live how the world is trying to get me to live. I can't go to certain places that the world is trying to get me. Why? Because I'm sold out to Jesus. I'm sold out to Jesus. And as long as I'm sold out, I'm going to keep my helmet on. As long as I'm sold out, I'm going to keep my shield. As long as I'm so sold out, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may eat or do that which is good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Now, I want to look at um, what Paul, the battle that Paul went through. And here we're looking at an apostle. Oh, he has some battles. He has some. Look at Romans. The, the, um, this is a chapter that I've referred to uh, plenty of times. Romans is the seventh chapter. I just want you to look at what Paul went through as an apostle. And he, he pretty much let us know that he, he had some problems too. If you look at the apostles in the Bible, they all had issues that they had to deal with. Peter, he was very, he was he's a person that snapped. He was quick, quick, quick witted, or quick, you know, when when the law was given to being taken captive by the by the um, Jewish um, the, the, the guards that were there. What the Paul did? He took I mean not Paul, but look what the Peter did. He took out a sword, cut off one of the centurions, um, or cut off one of the um the Jewish um soldiers' ear. Quick, quick temper, that's Peter. Look at Paul. Paul had, a, had anger issues. You remember when Paul and, and Silas got into an argument to the point where they, 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 their, their argument was so heated to the point that it caused them to separate. And Silas wanted to take John Mark. Paul said, no, it's not a good thing to take them. And they, 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 these apostles now arguing and to the point where it caused them to separate. Paul took um, Barnabas and Silas went, went, went with somebody else. But Paul had issues. Peter had issues. I'm pretty sure that many of the other apostles had issues. And Paul, when he says in Romans the seventh chapter, now, now I want to look at Romans the seventh chapter, verse 14. Look what Paul says in, in, in Romans the seventh chapter, verse 14. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Mm. And he goes on to say, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. What, what Paul is basically saying is this. For the things, the things that I don't want to do, I wind up doing them. But the things that I want to do, I find it hard to do. I, I find myself easily giving in to the flesh and hard to keep God's will when I want to do good. This is, this is what he means by that. For, the, for, what, which, for that which I do, I allow not. For, for what I would, that I do not. But what I hate that I do. Then he goes on to say in verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, in other words, if I do the things that I don't want to do, I consent unto the Lord that it is good. Now then it is no more. I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So Paul was even wrestling with his own sinful nature, just like we do today. We are constantly wrestling with this sinful nature. And, and what's interesting is this, you know, sometimes, and, and I look back and I have to, um, I won't, I have to look back and say, oh, wow. When I thought of, sometimes when God filled me with the Holy Ghost, June 16th, 1986, you know, you know how when you're newly saved, you think you, you know, you say, wow, I'm saved. I'm free from sin. I'm free from, I'm free from doing this. In other words, I'm, nothing can, can cause me to sin anymore and blah, blah, blah. You know how it goes. And then when you're newly saved, you're enthusiastic. 
Then again, as you begin to grow in the Lord, you begin to find out that the, the little things or the things that you thought you had um, overcome, you want to find out that, that, wait a minute, I thought I thought I had power over this. Then, but then again, you have to learn as the time goes on. And I think, and then this is what I, I've learned, that holiness takes time. It's a lifestyle. You don't get saved and then live holy overnight. You don't get saved and all of a sudden you're perfect. No. Holiness is lifestyle. It takes time to live holy. And that's what I had to learn. So I had to learn that the, the battles that I was going through, I had to learn how to yield myself to the Lord and to allow him to, to, to live through me so that um, the, the temptations that came my way, I didn't have to succumb to them. And this is what Paul was saying in verse 18 in Romans, the seventh chapter. He says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, Dwell up no good thing. And, and I want to say this. When we get saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, yes, the Lord delivers us from sin. He delivers us from the power of sin. That is absolutely true based on his word of God. But however, we have to understand that sin dwells in our flesh. And when I say when I say flesh, meaning this, not just this body but it dwells in our minds because the mind works in conjunction with the body. In other words, the sin comes from the heart, but your body can't do what your mind doesn't tell it to do. Our body follows the dictates of our mind. The mind follows the dictates of the heart. So if the mind is telling us to do something that's contrary to God's will, the body will follow, follow suit. And this is why it's a, a very important, and I, and I keep saying, to keep on the helmet of salvation because the helmet is gonna be the only thing that's gonna help us to overcome uh, these, these thoughts that are constantly infiltrating our mind. But, but Paul was saying here in verse Romans, the seventh chapter, verse 18, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, sort of, mm, let me back to track. He says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh, God of no good thing, for the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. And then he goes on to say, verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not. So, in other words, the good things that I want to do, I want to keep the Lord's will. I want to read my Bible. I want to pray. I want to establish a prayer life. I want to learn how to fast, but he says, that, but the good that I want to do, I don't do it. And then he says, but the evil, which I don't want to do, I do. That I do. Now, if I do that which I don't want to do, it's no more I that do it, but the sin that dwells in me dwells in my mind, in my body. And then he goes on to say, Oh, wretched man, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? So the, having the helmet is what keeps us, praise the God, um, safe. It's what keeps our minds stayed on Jesus so that when this enemy comes to attack our minds, we can, we can, we can um, not yield, that is, not yield to him. You know, and what's interesting, um, let me see, it says this. Having one in helmet, I just want to be some bullet points that I have here. Having one in helmet affords us the ability to not only walk in the spirit, but to, main a, to maintain a peace of mind while doing so. Walking or having one in helmet affords us a, the ability to not only walk in the spirit, but have a peace of mind while doing so. And, and what I want to um, say is this. Peace of mind is very important for all of us as children of God. And that's something that we all strive for. And the only way we can maintain that peace of, uh, of, of mind is by being in his will. The enemy knows that. You know, I, I believe we all know that. As, as, because when we're in God's will, everything seems to align itself. When we're in God's will, everything seems to work out fine. When we're in God's will, we have a peace that passeth all understanding. When we're in God's will, we hear his voice clearer. 
when we're in God's will, the conviction in us is more stronger. So that when we do things that may be that may seem contrary to his will, the Holy Ghost will speak and it will convict. Not condemn, I said convict. What I mean by convict is this: when the Lord convicts you, um, the Spirit speaks to you and say, wait a minute, hold on. I'm just saying, wait a minute, what you just did is not right. No. No, don't do that. Go to God, ask him for forgiveness. He'll forgive you. The Holy Spirit convicts us, not condemns us. Now, if it was condemning, that's a different story. Condem condemnation, and I thank God, we, we have no condemnation in Christ Jesus. I love you, Jesus, for that. We have no con condemnation. But when, when condemnation seems to set in, and, and that could be really harsh. Con condemning is, is, is that, that, that voice that would tell you, look, you're guilty. Look what you did. God's not going to forgive you. Look what you did. You're not a child of God. Look what you did. Um, you can't be holy. You just, that's condemnation. But the Holy Spirit convicts not only the world of sin, but he, the Holy Spirit will convict his own children. Convict. And conviction is not bad in and of itself. Conviction is more like a warning signal. That's what conviction is. It warns us when we are to, God, are to God's will. Conviction warns us when we are deviating from the path of righteousness. Conviction warns us when we're about to get into trouble because some things we can't see up ahead. But the Holy Ghost, he sees it and he knows. And, and the Holy Ghost will speak to us and tell us and try to guide us away. And what did Jesus say? The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will guide us away from error into truth. When the enemy is plotting your downfall, trying to infiltrate your mind and trying to plant thoughts in your mind to, to go out of God's will, to do that, this, that, and the other, to align yourself with the world, to allow this world to, 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 to take hold of you, the Holy Spirit would come in and we, we would, he would convict and he would guide us back into God's will. Guide us back into God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, light unto my pathways, a light. So when we are in God's will, there's a peace of mind that comes to us. When you're in God's will, our thoughts are even much clearer and, and even better. Look what um, the Philippians say. Now, I like this. Philippians verse um, chapter 4, verse 8. He says, Paul says, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. When the heart is in right place, in right standing with God, when the mind is in the right place, in right standing with God, all of these things that Paul mentioned in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse eight, will flourish in our lives. What we peace? I mean, the peace that God gives us is 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 unbelievable. And, and the Bible depicts it as this: God gives us a peace that passes all understanding. Sometimes we can't understand this peace that we have. How can we have peace in the midst of the storm that we're going through? How can we have peace in the midst of 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 um? Pain. How can we have peace in the midst of, um, of tragedy? How can we have peace? Well, it's the peace of God that gives, gives us all understanding. Or well, the peace of God that surpasses, I should say, it's a, it passes all understanding. Meaning you, sometimes we can't understand the peace of God that's in our lives. But it's given to us and it's genuinely given to us by the Holy Ghost. In other words, the Holy Ghost is, that's in us will, will bring out that peace when the time warrants it, something that you and I can just cannot make it come, we cannot just conjure it up. No, God gives these different fruits of the spirit that will surface and present itself 
in difficult times in our lives and or in time and or we will present itself when when the need calls for it and just have like peace the peace will come <laughs> when i think about the things that i've been doing in this life and i still, and I still haven't been waiting in 36 years there's still a lot to go through when i think about the things that i've been doing this life you know, or some of the things i've been through in this life there's some things that i've gone through in the past i should have been I should have been in the in the, in the psych ward, you know, the things that the principal put me through on my job, my oh God, the things that I've gone—I mean, things that the employees put me through on my job, things that people said tried to undermine and try to try to damage my name and try to some things that I mean, think about the things that I've been through. Lying? Do you have you ever heard have your boss lie on you or or someone in the job lie on you? Trying and, and knowing that they're lying, and and then try, just to trying to um you know just to, to to just to get you into trouble. And I tell you, yeah, I came home and and, and I, I I gotta say this, yes, I'm sa I was saved and I'm saved, but the, some of the, the things that that people have put me through, you know, yeah, they, they came I come came home and yes, sometimes it kept me up at night, you know, <laughs> promise to tell you. <laughs> It kept me up at night, couldn't sleep because of what I was going through. But I learned that after a while, when God, you know, and I, did, I yield myself to him and let him take over, God began to give me peace. And it not only gave me peace, but it showed me how to handle situations. You know, while the people in your job will plot against you and try to, 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 to do things, I mean, God, and Satan can be using these people you know, and some of them, I mean, sometimes it makes you wonder, Lord, how could this happen? How, but you know what happened? How, you have to say to yourself, well, how can this not happen? Because the Bible says that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that who are the core according to his purpose. And Florence will tell you that the things that we've been through and I've been through on my job and think, you know, you know, it wound up working out for our good at the end because we had gained so much. <laughs> we had gained so much. What the enemy meant to do by destroying and taking away, we wound up gaining more than what we, we and put it like this, we're in a better position than we were, I was in five or six years ago. But I have, you know, having on the helmet of salvation, having on, the sh having the shield of faith are very important um, things that that keep that keep us, you know, with a sound. And we talk about a sound mind. It keeps us with a sound mind because our mind cannot be sound if you don't have a helmet on. And we allowing Satan can use to use our heads as as a, as a punching bag and, and allowing him to beat up beat up beat us all upside our head. No, but if you have your helmet on, Satan Satan can try to hit you, but he you know. He might wind up hurting his own hand. <laughs> Why? Because the power of God, all these things that Paul mentioned has spiritual significance. All these things that he mentioned, you know, and as long as we keep these things um, on our possession, continue to keep the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation at our, um, at our, on our possession, you know, regardless of what Satan tries to do, would fail. It would fail because, as the Bible says, all things work together for the good to them that love the good, that love the Lord, and to them who are the called. If God called you and called me, called all of us, He called us not only for a purpose, but He called us with a purpose, and we have to continue to seek His will. Continue to seek his mind so that we can know what the Lord wants us to do. And, and, the only way we, and the only way we can seek his will is by keeping that helmet on. That helmet will keep us focused. You know, it will keep us focused and, and, you know, on the things of God. And, and so that when we get on our knees to pray, we can hear his, we can hear his voice more clearly. It's wonderful when you, you, you can get on your knees and, and get on my knees and, and the Lord speaks to us. Now, I don't say that he's, you know, the Lord speaks to me um, every day, but there's times when he does speak to you, 
speak to me, you'll know it because it does something, you know, you know, it does something to us, not only inwardly, but, you know, it brings joy, you know, because God doesn't just speak one time, no. The Lord, would, periodically, when God wants to get our attention, he would definitely speak. There's times when, you know, I can count the times when he spoke, you know, but most of the time he speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through his word. So having said that, um, I know that, um, uh, and I just want to recap what I was uh, spoke, spoke about. Um, the shield is very important. And we know why the shield is important because it protects our hearts. From the fiery dust of the wicked, the helmet is important. Why is the helmet important? Because it protects our mind. It protects our minds from the thoughts that the enemy may try to plant in our heads. It protects our mind from our own thoughts that we, that we have that may be contrary to God's will, contrary to his word. So when we have the helmet of salvation on, we have the, the shield of faith, we can truly say that we are striving not only to walk in the will of the Lord, but we are striving or, or equipped rather, to fight the enemy who comes at us and against us in Jesus' name. I want to thank you. And I know um, I already have my, um, the next time I will be going to be speaking, uh, it's going to be some time, um, a couple of months, but uh, I'm ready to share. And I, I just thank God for this, 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 um, this privilege that um, um, Pastor Bent and, and, and Dean um, um, Thomas Bonet, uh, thank you for just allowing me to come on this platform to, and to, to share your word uh, with, with the saints of God. And, and, and I count it a, a blessing because, you know, I love God's word. I love to share God's word. And, and, if, and as the saying goes, if I can just help somebody or anybody, I, I know that my living will not be in vain. But um, I just want to thank you um, for those, those of you who have tuned in. Um, praise the name of God. And I for, look forward to seeing you in the months to come, because I do, I have two more, um, um, I guess, there are two more parts that are left, because this is a four-part series, and there's there um, part three and part four that's remaining. So at this time, I just want to turn this back into the hands of um, Elder uh, Thomas Bonet, in, in Jesus' name. Thank you, everybody. And we do thank the Lord for blessing us with that wonderful lesson this evening, amen, on the topic of equipped for warfare, uh, the shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation. And uh, I took a bunch of notes, uh, praise the Lord. And um, it's funny, you know, I, I, you know, as you were going along, praise the Lord, I, uh, I was writing a few things down. And, and, and as you were going through your list of, of things that you wanted to point out, uh, a lot of that's, that's those things I, I wrote down, you ended up checking off. And uh, uh, bringing to light, uh, you know, um, but it's it's so important for all of us to recognize, you know, as you had mentioned, you know, the things that are afforded unto us. Um, you know, even Jesus wept over Jerusalem, you know, uh, due to the state of the Israelites, you know, because they, he saw that they didn't know in their present state of being, they didn't, they didn't realize what was afforded unto them, you know, and um, so it's important for all of us to realize what, you know, the Lord has uh, set aside just for us. And, you know, uh, that being, uh, he has equipped and covered us with uh, such a wonderful anointing. And um, ultimately, this, this entire, uh, you know, um, clothing, this armament that we're putting on is the, the anointing of God. And this is what the anointing of God uh, gives us. And, you know, Paul goes through and piecemeals it and, and, and defines exactly what um, the elements of that anointing is. And, you know, you pointed out two of them uh, this evening, uh, praise the Lord, in the shield of faith and the helmet, uh, excuse me, the helmet of salvation, and yes, the shield of faith. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, he does it in such simplistic terms, uh, praise the Lord, that, um, uh, you know, uh, to, just to make things a bit easier for us and, you know, uh, speaks in a language um, that we all understand that, look, you know, when you have faith, it's like a shield and, you know, it will fight. It is, 
it is stronger than uh, the toughest metal that is out there. It's stronger than iron. And here, you know, during uh, the time of of Paul uh, in the early church, it was during that Iron Age. And you know, it, you know, he's he's actually saying that, you know, greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. You know, we're holding a shield that's tougher than than what the Romans are holding. They're holding shields that might be made of iron. Well, we got something that's stronger than iron. And, you know, we have something that's so stronger than iron that, you know, it, it nothing that, that Satan himself can lob at us uh, from, um, uh, you know, from the gates of hell uh, could permeate uh, the, uh, the defense of that shield. As long as we can hold on to the faith, you know, and as you were talking, I just kept reminding myself and just envisioning David you know, when he ran up into Goliath, holding on to that shield of faith, no matter how big that man's sword was and his armaments and all of that and how impressive it might have looked, he did not allow it to deter him because that's what faith does. Faith will give you, you know, that type of, um, um, you know, perspective where, you know, what you got is not bigger than what I got, you know, and, you know, that whole greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. It just takes over the mind, you know. And when you know God like that, you know, there's nothing that man can conjure up and, you know, uh, you know, will have any effect unto us. So, yeah, we just have to walk through life holding on to faith. And, you know, the, I'm, in, I'm imagining, praise the Lord, that even if, you know, the enemy tries to lob something behind us, you know, even though the shield is supposed to be a forward facing uh, defense, you know, uh, there's a portion in the Bible where it says, the, where the Lord said, I'm your rare reward, you know, mm -hmm. that even if something is lobbed uh, at you from behind, like Amalek tried to do, you know, when he came against Israel's um, uh, women and, and children and the elderly and the sick, you know, uh, in the wilderness, you know, the Lord says, I'm your rear reward and I will be your rear shield, you know. Um, so, you know, he just wants us to have that faith that, you know, even though my back is not protected, God has my back, you know, and so um, that is so encouraging. And then the blessed breastplate of, of uh, excuse me, the helmet of salvation, just to know, praise the Lord, that once we become saved, you know, our minds uh, are, are totally transformed. And the Bible speaks about that, you know, how we're supposed to take on the mind of Christ. And, you know, once you have that, no matter what the enemy tries to do, you can see uh, praise the Lord in the, uh, the temptation account where the Lord is being tempted by Satan. You know, that's the one place that he was attacking. He was trying to get into that head. He was trying to give him a death blow. You know, uh, you, you knock off the head and, and the rest of the body goes down. And he was trying his hardest to get a death blow in on Christ. But, you know, uh, he had on that helmet, uh, and that helmet that he always uh, that always reminded him that he was the son of God, you know, and, and he has that in his head. He knows it, you know, nothing that the enemy can, can throw at him is going to, going to counter that. It just can't, you know, and that's how we have to think. That's how we have to see things. We have to understand what is afforded unto us. We have these, 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 this protection that's just guarded around us. And this protection is ultimately the anointing of God, you know, it's it's the race is not given to the swift, the battle is not given to the strong, you know, um, but he who believes in the Lord, this is the one uh, who's going to receive the covering, the anointing of God, you know, the one that's not going to walk around naked because, you know, uh, the bridegroom has placed, the kinsman redeemer has placed his robe upon our feet, you know, we're covered and we're protected, you know, by all that is of God, my goodness, and you really think of that, nothing can deter us. We just got to get out of our own way sometimes, you know, that's, that's the whole thing. And uh, there was one thing that you had said, um, uh, praise the Lord, a bunch of things you said, Elder Donovan. There was one thing in particular that just reminded me, you said that, you know, sometimes it's not just the enemy, sometimes it's just us, you know. And, you know, I'm reminded of the, uh, the parable of the seeds and how, uh, you know, everybody wants to, wants to have the good seed fall on the good ground. Everybody wants that. Of course we do. You know, but there are times when it could fall in uh, three other places. And of those three other places, um, only one of them is really satanically influenced. You know, um, that's the one where the seeds fall by the wayside and, you know, uh, the birds come and pluck it up. 
you know, but then you have the other one where the seed will fall on stony ground, you know, and you just don't allow it to, you know, uh, uh, you don't allow yourself to meditate on it. You don't allow yourself to, to have the word take root in your heart. You know, you're not thinking on it. You're not chewing the cud. And then the sun is going to come and scorch it because it has not, it has no, no nutrients to, to supply it and to make it stronger. That's on us. You know, and then the other thing that's on us is if the seeds fall on thorny, the thorns, you know, where the cares of the world will choke that word and it will become unprofitable. So of all of the four places where the seed can can fall, only one of them is really satanic and influence. The rest, aside from it falling on good ground, the, the other two is, is on us, you know, so sometimes we can get in our own way. And so I, I truly thank the Lord for this. I think it was so edifying. And it was such a reminder. And my goodness, I, 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 I'm right along with you, uh, my brother. You know, uh, we do have to just, just be on high alert. You know, um, none of us here should feel so comfortable where, you know, we 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 can just coast through uh, and right up into the rapture. It's just anything can happen at any time. We can get in our own way. We, you know, the enemy is subtle. You just got to be so sober minded daily. Um, and, um, and keep the Lord on our minds always. I like what you said. You said two things here. You said that the, um, uh, the helmets, uh, of salvation, how it protects the mind, of course, and the mind, if it's protected, and if it's under the anointing of God, it's supposed to have two things. You're supposed to have perfect peace, mind stayed on him, and you're supposed to have a sound mind. You know, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And when you look at a lot of the things that's going on outside of the doors of, of our homes in the secular society, you see a lot of people who just don't have sound minds. And, yeah. you know, I've never seen it as, as you know, distressing as it is, you know, where even the youth, just highlight the youth for, for a minute. My goodness, they're so fragile minded and everybody needs therapy and all of these things. It's just it's scary. And why is that? Because their mind is not on Jesus. You know, they cannot have a sound mind, you know, and they got to run to the doctors to try to get a sound mind. I'm not putting I'm not putting pouring water on on therapists and things like that. Some people generally do need therapists. I get that. You know, some people are born with deformities. You know, some people were born blind, some people were born without hearing, some people were born without limbs, but not everybody's born blind, not everybody's born, you know, can't hear, not everybody's not born with limbs or anything like that. You know, some people uh, generally need the help because they've been born with that deformity in their mind, but other people, you could avoid that a whole lot if you just think about Jesus. Just come to Jesus, he will give you a, a, a sound mind, and he will give you the perfect peace in that mind. Tribulation is going to come. But he said, if you do it the right way, by keeping your mind stayed on him, that tribulation is going to work patience. That patience is going to bring an experience that you can't get other than having gone through that tribulation. It's, it's a supernatural situation that you can't wrestle yourself out of. The only way you can get that patience and that experience is by going through and keeping your mind stayed on him. And that experience brings a hope and that hope make it not ashamed. It means that I can stand before God and not be ashamed, you know, of, of standing in front of him. Like, you know, Isaiah was when he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. I can stand before him because I went through and kept my mind stayed on him, you know, um, and, and gotten to the other side of this thing, saw how God delivered me from this supernatural situation. And, you know, just like you had said, you went through what you went through and now you're, you're better for it coming on the other side. Praise the Lord. That's how we will be. And that right there is a testimony for all of us, you know, that the Lord wants us to go through so that he can get us through and so that we can stand on the other side, not ashamed, you know? Um, and if you're not ashamed and you're somebody who is, is, being carved out as holy. Now you're starting to look holy. Now you're starting to sound holy. Now you're standing on holy ground with the shoes off your feet, you know, because you're not ashamed. So truly, I do thank the Lord for anointing you uh, to bring forth uh, such a wonderful lesson this evening. And before I turn the, um, 
before I ask for remarks, praise the Lord, uh, Pastor Betts, I'd like to invite anybody who has a question or a comment, uh, praise the Lord, for uh, Elder Donovan. Uh, praise the Lord. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to bring it out in Jesus' name. It was awesome. It was very edifying, as you said, in Jesus' name. I loved it. So I can't wait for the other two parts. We got two more parts, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So I see it. I see, I'm going to stay tuned and see you on the channel. But that was really good. And it was explained so just beautiful. It was good. And I'm going to shut up and give somebody else a chance. But thank you so much. I just want to tell you thank you. God bless you, Mother Rowan. Bless you Amen. too, son. And does anybody else have a comment or a question for, for Elder Donovan, Jesus' name? Praise the Lord, Elder Donovan, and praise the Lord, beautiful saints of God. This is Sister Pamela Mitchell. I just thank God, though I came in late from work tonight, but I thank God for the part that I was able to eat up. Not listen, eat up. Because this week, and it is only Thursday, this week, you talk about going through something, I it, it's it's one afternoon, a bombs are just being dropped. And one day as I was working, standing in the middle of the South Field in one of the CUNY colleges, and I'm saying to my saying to the Lord, Lord, I know this is a test. I know it is. I love you. I need you, but I'm going to hold on. So your message was such a blessing. It was on time. Right now, my soul is calm. Right now, my flesh is, is so mad at me because I'm calm despite what had occurred up until today and what continues to go on. So God bless you for being that instrument for me to listen, have my seeds planted, dug real deep down, and the flowers are coming up beautiful. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Mitchell. Praise the Lord, Missionary Donna Watson. Bless you, Elder Donovan. Oh, beautiful word, beautiful lesson. And I just sat here and just engaged in many of the things that you said that you had gone through. Oh, my God. The Lord took my mind way back. And even to this very day, we're being challenged on every hand. And even with what you went through, how people try to undermine you, how, when, not people, when people and even in the house of God. So I'll say it's spiritual and natural, but you know what is so significant and what you said, even with that, um, with that dialogue at that point is the helmet. Even in our going through and the various challenges that we undergo, they're under, we are to undergo those challenges as cup because they're for our spiritual growth. Yeah. And what helps us in our spiritual growth in our challenges and situations is because the helmet is not leaning. Hallelujah. The helmet is on straight. Our minds are focused and they're stayed on God. Yeah. And what gets us off course. Talk about me. I can do that all day long and talking about me. Hallelujah. Is when it starts to lean or the helmet starts to get off course. Then I can't see which way I'm going. Then I got to always straighten up the helmet. But when that helmet, hallelujah, is secure, hallelujah. And my mind has stayed on Jesus regardless of the challenges. Yes, they're going to come. Some hurt worse than others. Mm. Oh, God. But we can pray. Prayer takes us through. And I praise God for the encouragement that the Lord has allowed you and the refresher to bring to his people on tonight. God bless you, Elder Donovan, Elder Bonet. God bless you. Bless you, Elder Betts. God bless you, Ms. Sherry Watson. Mm, wow. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else that has a comment or question? Amen. 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 Again, we do thank you. Praise the Lord, Elder Donovan. And now I'd like to ask uh, Elder Betts, amen, uh, has comments uh, in Jesus' name. You say praise the Lord and good evening to all. Certainly the Lord is good. 
and he is indeed worthy to be praised. Uh, Ella Donovan, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule uh, to be a blessing to us in this part of the vineyard. Certainly we enjoyed part one, enjoyed tonight part two just as much. And I agree with Mother Rowe, we're looking forward to part three and part four. There is nothing like the word of the Lord and to be able to come to the table and to sit and to eat and to leave full. And so we thank you for being that blessing this evening. And one of the things of the many things that you did share with us, one of the things that you said that just stuck with me when you talked about the peace that God gives, you know, no matter what we're going through, what we're dealing with, there's something about the peace that the Lord gives. And when we talk about that uh, shield of faith, and that helmet of salvation, my mind goes to Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 15. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. And what are we feasting on? We're feasting on the peace that God gives. Sometimes what we're going through, and as you mentioned, Elder Donovan, people look at us and they're just waiting for us to drop because they know what we're dealing with. They can understand why we're smiling. But oh, thank God for peace. God bless you, sir. We appreciate you. Amen. Keep on giving us what you got and we'll receive it. God bless you. Elder Bonet, back into your hands. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Elder Beth. Amen. And thank you all for joining us this uh, evening. I uh, placed in the chat, praise the Lord, the link um, to um, uh, our YouTube page uh, for the Central Jersey Bible Institute. And we're trying to uh, have all of the recordings uh, from the uh, encouragement series, such as tonight, uh, uploaded to the page. Uh, so uh, if you would go there uh, to YouTube, um, and uh, look up the Central Jersey Bible Institute. This is the link here, but for those that are on the phone, you just have to just go to YouTube, look up, look us up, and um, you can subscribe uh, to the page. And uh, once we upload new recordings, you'll get an alert. And you can, uh, you know, uh, just go back over this as, as much as time, as much times as you want uh, in Jesus' name. Um, also, I just want to make a quick announcement. Uh, our next uh, Central Jersey Bible Institute Encouragement Series session will be next week, Thursday. Uh, so please feel free to come on back uh, in Jesus' name and also uh, join us tomorrow night. Same Zoom login information for the Greater Refuge Church of Christ Cry Aloud Prayer. Uh, the logon time is at 6.50, so 10 minutes before 7, and the actual service begins at 7 p.m. Same login information that you use to come here. And the speaker for the evening is Elder Taylor from Lighthouse Temple in Newark, New Jersey. Amen. And so uh, without further ado, um, let us close out in uh, Jesus' name. May every heart pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we love and thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunities that you have given unto us. Thank you for speaking unto us from up on high. Lord God, to remind us that we are protected by you, that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And that is done so. Why? Because you have equipped us with such armament, uh, Lord God, that uh, neither man nor Satan and his armies uh, can prevail against. So we do thank you for that, Lord God. And we ask to be increased, uh, Lord, in this strength, faith, Lord, and heart and mind, Lord, that we may be well-pleasing before you. Order our steps, govern us, Lord God, lead us to and fro, protect us, feed us with that which is nutrient uh, full for us, Lord, that we may always have the good, Lord God, and not lack any way there too. We thank you. Bless every participant on this call. Please, Lord God, uh, keep us rapture ready and away from the enemy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen, everybody. Amen. God bless everyone. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Beautiful. Love you. Have a good night. Love you. 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 Love you